What's up guys, it's and it's gone, and today we'll be looking at five candidates in each respective league who I believe have a pretty good chance of winning Rookie of the Year honors in 2023. With the arrival of the new year, many people begin to look at what the new year entails, and for baseball fans, that means young studs breaking out onto the major league stage after years of hovering under the public's eye in the minor leagues. Within the new CBA agreement between the Players Association and the owners, the Rookie of the Year award has have even more implications. Players who were once top prospects who then finish in the top three of Rookie of the Year voting will receive an extra year of service time. In return, that team will receive draft compensation with a pick after the first round. Therefore, there is a very high incentive for once players to win that award. The beauty of the Rookie of the Year award specifically is the ushering of a star player's grand career seemingly out of nowhere. Most of the time, the winners of the award will be top prospects, but every now and then, a player who may have been unheard of surprises everyone and wins the award. I'll give props to any fan who doesn't thoroughly follow the Atlanta Braves minor league system who knew Michael Harris before his breakout in 2022. So, if I overlook the eventual Rookie of the Year winner, keep in mind that this isn't an exact science. But, before we get onto the video, could you guys please hit the like and subscribe button. Currently, only 3% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if y'all do, not only would it help me grow my channel, but also encourage me to create more videos like this one for you guys. And without further ado, let's get on to the video. In the American League, there is one clear choice for Rookie of the Year, and that is Gunnar Henderson. In about a month's worth of play in the 2022 season, Henderson posted a 348 on base percentage with a 440 slugging, which adds up to a 123 OPS plus on a limited sample size. Furthermore, it looks like he'll be an above average fielder at second base, shortstop, and third. So if you were to extrapolate those numbers across a full major league season, you get a player with a war around 4 and 20 home runs, which is more than enough to be a candidate for rookie of the year. However, last year's major league production is not a ceiling compared to the stellar minor league numbers posted across a three-year career. Across roughly two full seasons of at-bats, Henderson posted a 388 on base percentage and slugged 478 while hitting 37 home runs and stealing 40 bags. The upside for Henderson is a player who hits around 20 home runs, steals 20 bases, and have a batting average around 280 in a five-war season, being the co-star to Adley Rutschman in the 2023 season. If that happens, then he wins AL Rookie of the Year. Ironically, the second most likely candidate to win Rookie of the Year also resides on the Baltimore Orioles. If you weren't a pitcher, Grayson Rodriguez would be the favorite to win Rookie of the Year. Across 292 minor league innings spanning all the way back to 2018, Grayson Rodriguez posted a ridiculous 419 strikeouts and a 2.47 ERA. It's safe to say that he was close to unhittable in the minor leagues, and if he can take even half of that success to the major league stage, then he's an all-star and frontline starter. Drafted 11th overall in the 2018 MLB Draft, he has a fastball that sits in the mid to high 90s and can touch triple digits. As a 6'5 righty, he generates that easy velocity through smooth mechanics and long arms. For secondary pitches, he has a changeup, slider, and curveball, all of which he can throw at any time to get outs. His changeup and slider are probably his best two out pitches as they sit in the mid 80s with heavy sink. The only issue with Rodriguez, however, is his ability to stay healthy. He only threw 75 innings last year, and the Orioles might be cautious with his uses in 2023, which would then hamper his Rookie of the Year chances. Staying in the AL East, we have Anthony Volpe, another infielder with a pretty good chance to win Rookie of the Year. Drafted in the first round by the Yankees in the 2019 draft, Volpe was projected to be one of the best prep hitters but fell to the Yankees all the way at the bottom of the first round due to his strong commitment to Vanderbilt. Volpe signed anyways and the Yankee got a steal. Volpe ended up hitting 294 with an OPS of 1.027 in his first professional minor league season in 2021 with 27 home runs and 33 stolen bases. Promoted to double and eventually AAA in the 2022 minor league season, he saw his numbers drop but still hit 21 home runs and stole 50 bases across 511 at-bats. The upside for Volpe is that his power speed threat uh, easily projects to him to be a 30-30 player given the right circumstances. But more modest projections still have him hitting around 15 home runs and stealing 15 bases. With projected OPS plus of around 125 coming from a shortstop position, he should definitely be in the running for AL Rookie of the Year all year long. Tristan Casas, by all accounts disappointed in his short stint in the 2022 season. After all, he only hit 197 and struck out 23 times in 76 at-bats, right? 
However, the initial stats do not tell the full story. Casas was an extremely patient hitter at the plate, and despite his 197 batting average, he posted a very respectable 358 on base percentage due to his 19 walks. Furthermore, he's shown the power with 5 home runs in a little less than a month's worth of time. If he can get more consistent in terms of his strikeout rate, while also keeping the power and plate discipline, it's not far-fetched to see a player who hits in the low 230s or 240s with a high on base percentage and slugging percentage. In turn, this will lead to an OPS plus of around 120 to 135. With him being a pretty good defender, albeit at the first base position, he has all the tools to make a run at the Rookie of the Year trophy as a power hitting first baseman similar to Pete Alonso's Rookie of the Year winner, as a first baseman who gets on base. Lastly, for the American League, we move on to a different direction and go with Logan Ohapi, a catcher for the Los Angeles Angels. Ohapi was acquired by the Angels from the Phillies at the 2022 trade deadline as the main piece from the Brandon Marsh trade. Since being traded, all he's done is rake both in their minor league system and in the short call up to the majors. In 29 games at AA since being traded from the Phillies, Ohapi posted a 306 batting average with a 473 on base percentage and slug 673, leading to a ridiculous 1.143 OPS. Obviously, one cannot expect those numbers in the major leagues, but in a cup of coffee, he still hit 276 with a 375 on base percentage for the major league squad. This year, Ohapi will be given the keys to the Angels' starting catching job, and if he can replicate some of those numbers posted in the minor leagues while also commanding a perplexing Angels pitching staff to say the least, he will be in the running for Rookie of the Year guaranteed. Like Gunnar Henderson, the Rookie of the Year award is Corbin Carroll's to lose in the National League. However, there is much greater competition in terms of candidates for Rookie of the Year in the NL. Corbin Carroll is no slouch though, and between him and Henderson, I'd probably take Corbin in the long run. The calling card for Carroll is his elite speed and subsequent defensive ability. Carroll ranked in the 100th percentile according to sprint speed, and was an excellent defender in the outfield. Carroll also posted an OPS plus of 133 due to his 500 slugging percentage. Now, extrapolating his 1.2 war across an entire major league season, and we get around 5.5 war. While that alone is definitely Rookie of the Year material, there is so much room for growth here with Carroll. His 260 batting average and 4 home runs is nowhere close to his minor league statistics, where he had an OPS of 1.4 and 1.035 respectively. I'm not saying Carroll is going to replicate those numbers across a full major league season, but if he can get his OPS higher than 830, which is what his OPS was this year, while still keeping that elite defense, we can easily see a 6-7 war all-star and a lock for Rookie of the Year. People who are more down on Corbin Carroll than most will argue that this is catcher Francisco Alvarez's award to lose. After all, he's a top prospect according to MLB Pipeline and one of the best power hitting catching prospects that we've ever seen. Seriously, he can hit 30 to 35 home runs from the catching position, while still possessing the arm to be one of the elite defensive catchers. Although proponents of batting average won't like him as his AAA stats this year had him hit below 234, he makes up for it with a good on base percentage, as he will draw his walks when needed. However, it does remain to be seen how major league pitchers will adjust him, and if they're willing to challenge him more given that low but hard rate of contact. Furthermore, with the Mets roster being a very competitive one, it remains to be seen how short the leash is for Francisco Alvarez if he struggles early on, and if he will get the necessary at-bats to rack up the counting stats needed to win this award. Nevertheless, I have no doubt that, given a full workload, Alvarez will adapt to Major League pitching, pitching smoothly and almost effortlessly hit 25 home runs with an OPS around 800 and then win Rookie of the Year. Jordan Walker, despite having a phenomenal 2021 minor league season, really exploded onto the prospect scene this year in 2022 with his promotion to AA. In the minor leagues, the transition from high A to double A is considered the biggest jump, and it is extremely encouraging to see a young hitter maintain their success despite facing harder competition. Walker this year fell one home run shy of a 2020 season and given a major league workload of 500 at bats, probably would have done so. Walker hit a nice 306 batting average with a 388 on base percentage and slugged 510 while playing a very good defensive third base. 
With Nolan Arenado blocking him at the hot corner, Walker has played a little bit of corner outfield to mix results. I suspect that he'll start the season in AAA to hone his defense a little bit more and be a call up around mid-season or earlier, maybe May. However, once he does get called up and explodes onto the scene as another stat cast darling due to his ability to hit the ball very hard consistently, he will receive some looks for Rookie of the Year. With recent subtractions to the Dodgers roster, which includes the losses of both Turners, rookie Miguel Vargas will take the lead as the starting third baseman slash outfielder if all goes according to plan. Vargas has had a spotless record leading up to his disappointing call-up to the major leagues late in September 2022. Up until then, for the Dodgers AAA affiliate, Vargas hit 306 with an on-base percentage of 404 and slugged 511 while hitting 17 home runs and stealing 16 bases. However, once called up to the major leagues, he struggled mightily. In 47 at-bats, he only hit 170 and slugged 255, leading to an abysmal OPS of 455. However, seeing major league pitching for a short time is definitely a plus and given an offseason to work on his game, hopefully we can see that the success carry over from his stellar minor league career. Given the excellence of the Dodgers lineup around him, I can expect for him to not only be on a winning ball club, but also rack up RBIs and runs scored, which only boosts his candidacy. Furthermore, Vargas looks to be a solid 5 tool player and is given the keys to be the next Dodgers star, following the likes of Seager, Bellinger, and Jock Peterson as studs that broke out in their rookie years. One sleeper pick that a lot of experts have concluded could really steal this year's NL Rookie of the Year is Colorado's Ezekiel Tovar. The smooth fielding shortstop has drawn a lot of praise for his breakout 2022 minor league season in all categories. Mainly in AA with a short stint in AAA this year, Tovar hit a combined 319 and slugged 540 with an OPS of 2927. I have no doubts that in a course field environment, Tovar has the capability to replicate those numbers while also hitting 15 to 20 home runs and stealing double digit bases while also being an elite defensive shortstop. Stats that favor the ballpark, like War and subsequently OPS Plus, won't have him valued so highly as looking at the raw stats, but if Tovar is able to finish in the top votes of his Gold Glove category while also hitting 15 home runs and keeping his batting average in the 280s, then he forces himself into consideration for that award. Now it's prediction time, and starting in the American League, I'm going to go with first baseman Tristan Casas for this award. Assuming he does stay in Boston and doesn't get traded, he has the highest upside offensively out of all of these players, and I think his short stint in the major leagues helps a lot. He has shown that he can keep his elite plate vision at a major league level by drawing 19 walks in 27 games and still has that elite power that was teased a little bit by hitting 5 home runs. I think that over a full season, Casas begins to make more consistent contact and eventually racks up the home runs while keeping his on-base percentage high to win that Rookie of the Year award. As for the National League, the obvious and clear pick is Corbin Carroll. His elite defense just provides such an excellent floor to build off of, and even with a down season offensively, War will still have him finish in the top three simply because of that defense. But given the upside that his numbers produced in the minor leagues, is why I believe he will win this award with a war around six or seven. Well, but if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always open. And um, thank you guys for watching and sticking to the end. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.